Got it? Except... Hello, my name is Arthur Hull of Village Music Circles. In the last 20 years, I've taught over 10,000 people in 25 countries how to facilitate rhythm-based events, drum circles, if you will. In this video, I will show you some of the basic techniques that you can use to help people in a drum circle play together and make the best possible rhythm music that they can create. I will also reveal the tried and true four-step Village Music Circles protocol that when followed can help you facilitate a fun and successful event. Drum circles are a wonderful way to bring community together no matter what age, background or rhythmical experience the players possess. Drum circles are a safe place for anyone of any age to explore and express their rhythmical spirit. Drum circles are a great tool for creating connections within a group by building a sense of community and common purpose. Drum circles are also good for the individuals within the group by connecting them with their unique gifts, both musical and non-musical. You will find drum circle facilitation being used for everything from helping folks with special needs, corporate team building, school assemblies, celebrating birthdays and weddings, and so much more. This video will give you the basic foundations for facilitating a mixed population community drum circle. The definition of the word facilitate is to make easy. It's that simple. As a rhythm event facilitator, you are there to help make it easy for the players to connect their rhythm contributions and make drum jazz together. Let's start with the physical setup of your drum circle. If you've got 30 players in your circle or less, a single row of chairs shoulder to shoulder with two aisleways is sufficient, works quite well. If you have more than 30 people to play in your drum circle, you don't want to put them shoulder to shoulder because that expands the circle wider and wider. Making the players further and further apart from either side of the circle causes logistical problems for you the facilitator and for them the players. They can't hear the other side of the circle. They can only hear the people and connect with the people around them. So if you have more than 30 players, then just add more rows until you accommodate the number of players that are showing up to your circle. If this is a closed population like a, a corporate event or a specific number of people you know are coming then you know exactly how many chairs you need to accommodate that group but if it's an open invitation community drum circle that's a little bit different if you're hoping for a hundred people to show up and you set up a hundred chairs and only 60 people show up that means you have 40 chairs unoccupied and scattered throughout a very holy drum circle. And I'm not talking spiritual. In your orchestra pit, your players are too spread out and separated to make the right connection. They are not as connected as they could be if they were sitting next to each other. So here's how to do it. You're hoping or you believe that maybe 100 people are showing. You set up a circle for 80 people, and then you set up a couple of stacks of chairs on the outside of the circle, so that if more than 80 people come to your event, you can unstack those chairs and add a couple more rows to accommodate the extra players who are coming in. Not a problem. In a large drum circle, you want to fill up your first three rows before you add more rows. This particular circle that we're making here is gonna accommodate 250 people. Now, everybody can hear everybody and there's a whole group dynamic that is happening inside this concentric circle, drum circle. 
cheating really helps. The first way to cheat is make sure that all your bass drums are in the center of the circle. Like tossing one rock into a pond, it creates this wave that goes out from the center. The same thing happens if you've got the low drums in the center of the circle, radiating outwards. It creates a sonic wave that keeps all parts of the circle in time and in tune and connected with each other. So, low drums in the middle. Now, if you're supplying the equipment for the whole event, then your best situation is to scatter low, medium, and high drums throughout the circle, but use your bass drums in the center. And mix your percussion, bells and shakers and woods, scattered throughout the circle. So that when you want to showcase any one of those timbres or pitches, you can go, all the bells, keep playing, and then you stop everybody else, you have a bell song that comes from everywhere. All of the drum circle facilitation techniques that you're going to see in this video are totally applicable to large events and single circle events in relationship to family-friendly community drum circles. The same technology that you're going to see can be adapted to specific population drum circles, such as school programs, kids at risk, well elderly populations, special need populations, and corporate events. The technology would be the same for those special programs, but the village music circle protocol that we're going to teach you might need to be adjusted to meet the needs of any specialized program. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yeah. Go! In the beginning of the drum circle, during the dictator and director protocols, you're doing something we call drum call. And there are seven basic elements that you need to pay attention to as you are moving the group towards their own musicality so that you can be their facilitator. The job description of facilitator is your third protocol. First of all, you take responsibility for the physical circle. You make sure all the low drums are in the middle. You adjust the chairs. You keep the aisleways open. You bring people into the circle to fill up the first three rows. Four, three, two, one. Then you teach the facilitators body language. So they understand the signals that you're going to use to help them make more sophisticated drum rhythm music. Define the roles. You're the facilitator and you leave the circle when they don't need you, and you go into the circle when they need your help. That lets them know it's their responsibility to hold the music together, that you're not in the middle just telling them what to do or entertaining them. Establishing trust is an important element, so you don't want to pull any jokes on them or do half body language signals you want to be congruent in the direction you're leading the group as they get more connected together in their music making. You want to teach without teaching. So now you're in director mode and you're directing them to the elements that make the music work by identifying and showcasing low drums, all the percussion, whatever it is that you need to showcase in order to educate them about all the sounds available in the circle. And you orchestrate self-facilitation. That's your job description. In actuality, you're there to make your job obsolete. 
the better they get at sharing their rhythmical spirit, the less you need to intervene. And the last element, read the group. Because the group dynamic changes from the very beginning of the circle to the very end. It's not the same animal at the end of the circle that it was in the beginning of the event. As you begin to educate the group about the elements in the music that they weren't aware of when they started, they integrate themselves into a musical dynamic that changes as they begin to feel safer and explore and know that they're not going to be judged for making a mistake. And the interaction and the dialogue and the rhythm connection just gets more sophisticated. By reading the group, you can meet them at the level of their sophistication and guide them towards an in-the-moment music-making drum ensemble. Take your time, take your time, breathe. Throughout this video, you will see myself and other Village Music Circle graduates facilitating in the middle of the circle, facilitating the music of the people. But in actuality, the job description of the facilitator is to stay out of the circle as much as possible to allow these people to connect together across the circle and make the magic music that they have the capacity to do. There's only three reasons to go into the circle. To help the group come to a close when you can hear it in the music. To help the group transition from one musical piece to another when you, you can hear and see and feel that they've explored that particular rhythm as far as it can go but there's good music. And also to fix something. Something needs to be fixed in the circle. Arthur's making a call and response signal. I play, you play. I play, you play. Attention call, call and response. They're responding. More calls and responses. It teaches phraseology as well as just teaches them the new body language. Now, simple patterns is the best. And actually, what I'm doing here is dynamics, playing softer and softer and softer. And it's a sneaky way to help them play softer and softer and softer. Until they end up playing their nose. This is a call to rumble by sticking your stick in the bell and wiggling it and wiggling your hands. The rumble started, now you can work the rumble. There's lots of different ways of doing that. Ah, this is a rumble wave. Aha. Four, three, two, one, and boom. Boom, accent notes, which is a great way to stop the group. Okay? This is their first circle they think they need to applaud. Yeah, no, no applause needed. At the beginning of the drum circle, your job description is really just to teach the group the basic body language signals that you'll be using throughout the rest of the event. You teach the whole group of players the basic facilitator's body language signals by doing what we call full group interventions. Full group means you're telling everybody to start, everybody to stop, everybody to volume up and down. In the beginning of a community drum circle, you want to direct the individuals in the group towards group consciousness by using full group facilitation body language signals. Let's look at some of these signals. Attention calls. You're doing an attention call with the whole group because you want their attention for something. Oh, listen to each other. Here's an attention call in preparation for a full group stop cut. Now, to see the body language, 
Now, I'm doing thumbs up with this group at the Mac World, okay? But I'm also doing attention call at the same time. I'm getting their attention. And I'm speeding up. Now look at my body. I'm using full body. Let's make it very readable. And I just sped the group up just by pushing the beat a little bit. Marking the pulse, making sure everything's solidified. There we go. Boy, it's nice to have a big white stick. And in a circle this big, it's nice to have a big bell. Now I'm pushing it again. Tempo up, right there, that's good. Marking the pulse. Attention call. And one more push. Now we're into full groove. And away we go. You're looking for the common denominator speed. Where can they best play? Listen to the difference in the spirit. Now we're still at the beginning of the Mac World Circle. Notice there's a lot more people now. Okay, full attention call for, for call and response. But I had the low drums continue to play. They didn't know that. By making space for them to listen, they understand what the low drums are. So we're beginning to move into director mode. Now remember, this is a bunch of computer geeks at Macworld. They're not professional drummers, but listen. Here we go. A fundamental village music circle concept is get out of the way, or go, G-O-O-W. In order for the group to feel truly empowered, it is important to let them play entirely on their own. Since this is a training video, the video will not show the facilitators going as much as you would see them going in a real event. Walking in, in the round, and volume down. Marking the pulse, pointing to my ears, and then bringing the hands down, brings the volume down. By teaching your drum circle players these basic, simple body language facilitation signals, you've created a platform from which you can begin to direct the group's attention towards the elements that make the drum circle work. Once the players understand and can follow your body language signals, you can begin to direct them towards percussion ensemble consciousness through the process of sculpting. Director. As the director, you're directing the player's attention to the elements that make a drum circle work by using what I call teaching without teaching techniques. Teaching without teaching is creating experiential training in the drum circle by sculpting out and showcasing types of drums and pitches as well as the percussion timbers. The first thing that you want to do in director mode is sculpt out and showcase different pitches and timbers and percussion. This is Mary Tolina. She's giving a continue to play signal to ah, the low drummers in the center of the circle. Just twiddling your hands. That's a continue to play signal. Attention call to the whole group. Counting down to stop. So the people that you give the continue to play signal to, they continue to play. Oh, and she's having everyone else breathe. Okay, I play, you play, signal, clapping with the whole group. And really, she's 
really having you focus mostly on the low drums, right? She's educating you about the low drums just by having them showcased. One, two, let's all play. She just brought in a section of the group. See how she sculpted? Okay, now she's sculpting into another section. And she brings them in. This is called layering in. She's layering in everyone else. There we go. And we're all back to groove. And we've learned about the low drums. And as a result, the rhythm connection amongst the people improves. Okay. All the big low drums. So I'm sculpting out the low drums. And they become a platform for something else. Everybody else. Four. You count down to stop. One and... And there's the foundation. And now that's a platform, a musical platform. Go, 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 go. And you can do all kinds of things with it. There's your bottom. If you can't find it. You can do call and response, right accent notes. Come on, good. Come on, good. Come on. Here, all I'm sculpting bays. out a all drum type. Bays. All the djembes, keep on playing. Everybody else ready? Everybody else ready? One, two, one, two, let's all play. Oh. Keep on going, Jim Bass. Come on. Everybody now, the Jim Bay platform is a platform for accent notes with everyone else. They're really listening to the Jim Bass and identifying that sound. Accent notes and stop. Don't give up, Jim Bass. So anything you sculpt and guess I'll play. Go. is a platform for doing something else on top of it. Here we are in Barcelona, and I'm holding up all the percussion instruments and giving them the signal to continue to play. Now I'm telling all the drummers, counting down to stop. Except for that one drummer over there, I have to catch him. Good. Now we have a percussion song. And the drummers are going, oh, there's percussion? And once again, that can be a platform. That percussion song can be a platform for some other facilitation of the non-playing people. There's a, a lot of small frame drums in the group. I brought them in. I'm having everybody on the outside of the inner circle play. That just leaves the inner circle. Now they're playing and they're waiting. Now we're moving here from director to facilitator. We're moving into facilitating the group. And playing with the music. And giving them ideas for improvisation. And away we go. Ah, back in Seattle. This is a half group sculpt. There's so many things you can do with half groups. But the first time you do it, is to get that side to listen to that side. It's that simple. Make a big show. Look, don't they sound great? Thank you. I play, you play. By now you know this is a, a call, an attention call 
for call and response. Keep it simple. I mean really simple. Because you really want them to connect to the other side of the circle. Now you're going to make up your own response. Ready? Here I call. Now respond. And once again, I'm leading them into their own improvisation. Because that's what it's all about. Getting them to the place where music is being made. Here we go. Very good. And in director mode, you can also do gender sculpting. Now, I didn't have my men signs and women signs from the bathroom, so I had to draw on some plates. And so you're seeing a man and a woman, the best I can do in, in a 10 second drawing. And so now I'm gender sculpting. All the women. And all the men. And so the women have stopped, and now the men are playing. Now, in actuality, by doing that, I've sculpted, back to the women, two different songs. One by the women, one by the men. Now, look at my body language. And about how obvious is it that I'm going to switch? So this is early in this particular circle, and they need to have a little help. You, I wouldn't just flip the signs back and forth, but once they get the idea, my body language can be more sophisticated. And now, I'm switching back and forth quicker. Now we call this modulating. I'm modulating the sequence, making them shorter and shorter. And it changes the dynamic and it's also a great way to integrate the men and the women back together again. Into one ensemble. So I'm merging the two songs into one. And having a little fun doing it. Volume down. The lower the volume, the more the listening. By standing in that spot and orchestrating, I've made it the orchestration spot, so I need to leave it, so I'm going. Facilitator. The third job description in the Village Music Circles protocol is to become the facilitator that you intended to be. As dictator, you talk the players in the group about the body language that you would be using as their music facilitator. As director, you educated them about the different elements that make the drum circle work. The players themselves will actually dictate to you when you become the facilitator, simply by starting to interact, listen to each other, and make rhythm music. Then you can start facilitating that rhythm music. Okay, you're doing good. Now listen. And right there, right there. Don't be in a hurry. We got nowhere to go because we're already there. Now that the group is listening to each other and creating their own drum music through rhythm dialogue and melody line, they are in percussion ensemble consciousness. Now you can direct the player's percussion ensemble consciousness towards orchestrational consciousness by sculpting and showcasing their music. Let's do a start and a stop. Ready? You can finally facilitate the music that they are making together by creating small successes and musical dialogue by sculpting songs with mixed timbers and drum pitches. Sculpting and showcasing a song of mixed timbres and pitches educates the players in your group about orchestrational consciousness. Sculpting the circle as a platform for more sophisticated musical interactions is what your intention is as facilitator. Here we go, and 
You got it. Go, 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 go. This is fairly early inside facilitator mode in the circle. It's a shaky rhythm. There's not that much listening. I'm trying to create a platform of connected players. So I'm sculpting out rhythm connection. If I can find that rhythm connection and tell them to continue to play, then I'm gonna sculpt out the rest of the people and see if we have a rhythmical foundation for which to build some music on. It's a little shaky. Once you have a rhythm connection platform, then you can start listening for interactive dialogue amongst the players. And you get more sophisticated music making. Here we go. Stop cut. Get out of the way. Uh-oh. I have to go back in, mark the pulse. We lost a couple of people. It's a little shaky. Now some people are panicking. It's even shakier. Hey, it happens. Well, you've always got a bell. And coming back into groove again. And this is a selected song of the best players that are connected. Oh boy. Now I'm going to bring the rest of the players back in. And we're using this rhythm connection as a platform for solidifying the group. Bringing them in, asking them to play softly. And I'm doing it by sections. So slowly but surely, the rhythm connection gets stronger and stronger. go layering in another section of players on top of the rhythm platform even better and finally the last group so this took a little longer than I usually like to spend inside the circle at any one time but the group ended up being a lot more connected than they were when I entered. And that's the objective of song sculpting. Let's bring in a couple of low drum players. Now everybody's going. Young man's having a little bit of trouble on the bottom. Not a problem. Just pat him on the back. Yeah. There we go. He's got it. A little bit of encouragement. We just sculpted a rhythm connection song. It's a nice platform for music making. And they ended up being better players at the end of this song sculpt. More connected than they were in the beginning. The difference between what you just saw and what you're seeing now is that was a community drum circle with a mix of populations. This is an exercise in the village music circle training. The exercise is a sculpting exercise and they're looking for, listening for connections in the group and trying to sculpt out a song that represents rhythmical connection interactive dialogue and harmonics and melody line 
So there's some deep listening involved. But this particular group of people have been playing together for about 14 hours. So we are already a connected batterie. And this is in the moment music, and you're selecting from it the best representation of musicality that you can hear in the group at that moment. Then you're going to stop cut everyone else, and that becomes the platform which you're helping the rest of the players listen to and then bringing them back in, get to. Every time you do that kind of song sculpt, you're raising the musicality of the whole group. That's the objective of facilitating in a drum circle. Continue to play, listening for connections, the count, the stop, and the result, listen. You hear the dialogue? Can you hear the song? Let's take a couple more examples out of this village music circle training exercise and listen to the result of sculpting a song. So every time you sculpt a song in facilitation mode, you're actually raising the level of everyone's ability to listen to and collaborate and cooperate with each other. And you actually hand the responsibility of making the music over to the group to the point where they don't need you anymore. They're really moving to the level of orchestrational consciousness. They're supporting each other, supporting the rhythm, uh, and creating conscious, in the moment, music orchestration. And they're building community at the same time, making connections beyond the music. Now, this was just a music exercise, and we're using Call to Groove to get the players back into the music. But there are many, many different ways, once you've sculpted a song, to move the group back into music that's less dynamic and more listening, such as layering individuals, layering in drum types, layering in sections. Instead of going one, two, let's all play, how about saying, at your leisure, make up your own. Orchestra Conductor. As the group's music making becomes more sophisticated, so can your body language and facilitation sequences be more sophisticated. 
During a facilitated drum circle event, you have guided the players from individual consciousness to group consciousness to percussion ensemble consciousness. And finally, you facilitated them to orchestrational consciousness. That doesn't mean that they can audition for a band after they get done playing in a drum circle, but it does mean that they're paying attention to each other. They understand the roles that their different instruments they're playing has to do in making music together. They're dialoguing across the circle, connecting on so many levels. If you have followed the Village Music Circle protocol, by the last part of your drum circle, you've generated a mutual trust between you and the players in your event. You will trust them as much as they are trusting you to take them on a fun and safe rhythm journey that they cannot go on without your help and your facilitation. As their orchestra conductor, with their permission, you want to play with and orchestrate the group's music by following the people who are following you. Listen deeply to the music in the circle and the music will tell you what to do next. Working with what they give you. Sometimes you don't have to make anything happen in a drum circle. All you need to do is listen to what's right in front of you in the music and use it. If you walk into the middle of the circle and you have a big plan, Sometimes you're more attached to your plan than you are to the music that's in front of you. When that happens, every once in a while there's some sort of spontaneous interaction that happens amongst the players in the circle that you might perceive as getting in the way of your plans. But what they really are, are gifts to the facilitator to utilize in the group. Look for gifts. They're always there in the music. Constantly use your facilitator's radar. You have three radars operating at all times, and you may not be aware of them. You have a visual radar, an audio radar, and a kinesthetic radar. Turn them all on full. Utilize them in your drum circle facilitation and you'll receive all the information you need to facilitate a fun, successful event. In this last piece, you're watching me facilitate a group that has been playing together for at least one hour. We've gone through the four protocols and we are in orchestration. I'm the orchestra conductor and there's an equal mutual trust between us. Now, something comes into the circle spontaneously. An African talking drum player. What to do? How about seeing it as a gift and playing with it? This is the annual drum circle at the National Association of Music Merchants. We call it the NAM show. Masamba Diop is playing, he's a Tama player, a talking drum player, and I've got my mic up against his drum so you can hear it. He is a renowned international player, well known throughout this country and the world beat community. This is his first time in a drum circle, and certainly a drum circle like this. He's excited like a little baby. I'm there to focus on the group and at the same time showcase this amazing talent okay and so at the process I'm actually teaching him the body language stop cut telling him to continue to play oh he goes oh I can solo now I'm gonna mark the pulse so this gives him a time to solo and get showcased Thank God for the cowbell. Now I'm going to get a little fancy with a group. And 
and Masamba gets a little confused and he finally figures it out. He's a consummate performer. Now we're marking the pulse and I'm speeding the group up just with my body language. And <laughs> Masamba is dancing along with me. Thank you, Masamba. From that point on, he was at that circle every single year afterwards. Arthur goes, and so does Masamba. Go, G-O-O-W. Get out of the way. Let the group groove. Because together with Masamba and I, we brought them up to this new place, this new rhythmical place. Let them enjoy it. And this is called stow, stay out of the way. Next you'll see a composition, a sequence of events being facilitated by me with the group. I could do this at the end of the circle. I would never attempt to do what I'm about to do at the beginning of the circle where they're just learning my body language. This is an hour and a half into the circle. I'm sculpting a section and I'm going to have them continue to play. I'm going to cut the rest of the group, stop cut. You always count down to stop and count up to start. Okay, now I'm talking to the group that's not playing. I've sculpted that out a section of not playing people. And I'm going to move the rhythm over. Now I just move the rhythm over to one quarter of the circle. The players have already seen this. I don't even need to talk to them, so I'm just speaking gibberish. Here we go. Now the rhythm is being switched from one quarter to the next quarter. We're moving the rhythm around the circle. Now we've just moved the rhythm around. We go to the beginning group. As they get the body language, I have to use less vocal. I can move quicker. They know what's happening. I'm telegraphing my body language so well that I can move it from one section to another fairly quickly. Now I'm modulating it, right? We started really slow and now it's every measure. Now watch what happens. The other side, oh, wait a minute. More modulation, quicker sequences, excitement coming up, and away we go. One half of the group, other half of the group. I would never attempt this in the beginning of a program. Half group sculpts, switching the rhythm. Modulating that now. More modulation, quicker. Counting to groove, we call it call to groove. One, two, one, two, let's all play. Or anything like that, as long as you're counting up. Count up to start, count down to stop, and then get out of the way. Because listen to this. They don't need a facilitator. They don't need you, so get out of the way. Congratulations, you now have enough information to get out there, have fun sharing your rhythmical spirit while making your own mistakes and learning from them. The Village Music Circle's drum circle format and philosophy is very flexible. I'm sure you will come up with new and wonderful games and activities using rhythm facilitation. 
I hope this short introduction to the art of drum circle facilitation has been valuable for you. It is just the tip of the iceberg. If you would like to learn about drum circle facilitation in more depth, Village Music Circles has a lot of great options for you, including books, DVDs, and of course, the immersive hands-on facilitation trainings that we do all around the world. All of this is available through our website, drumcircle.com. One last thing. This is Arthur Hull reminding you to share your spirit.